Good morning. My name is Ryan. Welcome to Coffee and Resales, where we talk about stuff I find at yard sales, sweet markets, and garage sales. Try to make a couple bucks on them online. Uh, I live stream most a bunch of mornings, and then uh, so occasionally post the stuff on the after in the afternoons, and talk about what I sold, what I found. Any issues coming around, uh, answer questions as they arise. Uh, Trying to grow the channel just to see how this works out. So, if you like what you see, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll go with that. Today, uh, sold, sold, had an okay weekend selling. Um, bought a couple things, but haven't found a whole lot in the last few days. Uh, last week at Goodwill was a little bit of a wash, but that's fine because like the previous weeks have been really decent with some fines. Uh, and uh, talk about, I sold some stuff at flea market and I'm going to talk about how that went because it went okay uh, had better days but I've had way worse so we'll see how that goes alright so starting out uh, stuff that stole this, sold this weekend went really good sale uh, which was let's go here well, we'll start off with low to high uh, start off this is not vintage. If it was, it'd go for more probably. Uh, old style Cherry Coke women's crop t-shirt. Uh, six bucks. Sitting on it a little too long. Um, it was Cherry Coke. So that, the reason I bought it is because it said Cherry Coke on it. And so, which is a little bit of a unique item. So, eh. Let's, and it was, a, I think I got it for, a, the most I paid for it was a dollar. Uh, so, that's why I snagged it. Next up is one I thought this was going to go a little bit more, but, it didn't, uh, but this is still profit actually. Uh, this is a maternity, women's maternity, Death Star, that's no moon, ruched shirt, uh, good condition, 10 bucks. Uh, one of the major disappointments, I think, is because I would have, I'm a Star Wars guy and, and nerd and comic books and all that sort of thing. I grew up reading and then watching and that sort of thing. And I see nerd culture stuff on the shelf and it's a lot more mainstream now. Back when I was growing up, there wasn't a whole lot of, I mean, occasionally you'd find Spider-Man or Superman or Batman stuff. Maybe if the uh, if there was a movie out or something like that. But the comic book stuff, you had to order it at magazines. It wasn't on the rack. And now it's showing up in thrift stores and flipping it is actually a challenge. It has to be a really kind of unique item. And sometimes not even then. Can you move it? And so I've actually gone through a couple of stages where I bought superhero stuff and sold very little of it. And so I have to really double check when I find something as to whether or not I'm going to keep it. Uh, sometimes my kids like some of that stuff, and so if the size is right, I'll, I'll pass it on to them. But otherwise, some of that stuff is like, eh, not really. So unless it fits me or it's something I want, and, and if I look, I got I to gotta be careful and look it up so it doesn't take up too much room. So that's where that goes. Uh, anyway, moving on. I sold, we have... Ooh, Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. More Christmas stuff. Sold these two. These are older. Uh, reindeer. Old plastic reindeer. Uh, 80s, I think these are probably from the 70s, possibly the 60s. Uh, 10 bucks for the pair, uh, which is about about in line. I think I started them off a little bit higher. And I took a, a no bite that was showing real interest. Uh, so I was dragging them down. I think I took, I think I had them for 17 and took an offer for 10. And these, this is stuff I had stashed away. So, uh, from my childhood, uh, that we didn't need anymore. So, uh, that's a good little sale there for somebody to get to Christmas. Next up, Eric HVAC. $11 and 11 cents for a trade pro. Uh, thermostat. Picked a, I picked a handful of these up for like a buck a piece. Uh, I think I've got picked up three or four. I've sold two. And I've got one more up there that's like a, a way better uh, model. 
Uh, so I've been selling them between ten and fifteen bucks a piece. I think I think I got twenty for one of them. Uh, but I mean, it's electronics HVAC. They powered on. I put put batteries in them and they powered on. So I uh, figured worth a shot for uh, thermostats. So and that's been because you know, everybody needs a thermostat. So. Uh, I think it was a guy who did HVAC work and the folks just wanted them replaced, so he pulled them. And so I got them a yard sale. Buck piece. No complaints so far. So uh, I've picked up a handful of HVAC parts at a couple of yards, like guys doing stuff out of their garage or whatever. I've got, I actually had a bunch of capacitors and relays, and those have been selling. Those have been selling pretty well over. I got this. I got them all last winter because I remember being cold when I got them. Uh, at an estate sale, a guy had a box full in his garage of new old stock capacitors and within a few relays, and those have steadily been selling between 10 and 20 bucks a piece. Uh, so and I got a few more left, but most of them have sold. Just making sure I'm kind of the cheapest on eBay uh, on those things, and they go pretty quick. So, uh, next up, final sale. Well, I have one sale that hadn't been paid yet, and that's these uh, a pair of Marie Lu uh, graphic novels by. Uh, this is one of those that this sold for eight, seven or seven or eight bucks for these two, and uh, if I had the third one, it, the per book would have gone up higher. You know, that's like a $15 set if you've got all three. Uh, it's one of those things, the the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Sometimes, that honestly doesn't always necessarily make sense to me sometimes. Um, but it also does in another aspect where uh, people don't want to bother having to buy a complete collection. They'd rather, piecing, they, people don't want to bother piecing together a collection. They'd rather buy the whole thing all at once. And are willing to pay a little bit extra sometimes, even when if they put a little more work in, maybe they could put get everything for cheaper. Not necessarily the case. So these two, and it wasn't worth me going out and getting the, the other book to make the sale to make it to run it up either, because that would have been what after fees and all that sort of stuff and, and shipping, it just wasn't worth it. So anyway, those two for seven eight bucks. That's fine. Been holding them. Some of the stuff just glad to see head out. Finally, my good sale. Uh, ben, I think I started this one at about 200 bucks uh, because of, of I thought there were some comps that were a little bit lower. How, where did it start? It was one of those situations where I think I saw this. I saw this for 65. I wanted to say I saw comps like people buying it without best offer in like the 70 to 80 dollar range. So okay, whatever. So I ran it up to about 150 bucks just to see. And I've been drawing it down over, I think I got this about six, eight months ago. And I've been drawing it down ever since. And finally, finally got, have, have interest from one guy who whined about the price. Um, and I probably, I probably wound up selling it to what he wanted to buy it for, but that's fine. Uh, because I just wasn't sure, I didn't know. And I was, so I was gradually drawing the price down. Finally got, a, had about 75, 80 bucks. Somebody offered me 65 and I took it. Uh, this book, I think this book cost me a dime. I think I paid 10 cents for this. I didn't pay more than a dollar. I know that for certain. Uh, this is F15 Crew Chief's Handbook. Uh, technical, this is by North, this is a Northrop Grumman sort of a manual. Uh, so technical books. Uh, sell really well. Uh, there's nothing secret about what's in this book. I mean, you can probably find most of this stuff online. At one point in the 80s, it may have been. Uh, but you can gradually... Uh, you can find in te military technical manuals uh, the stuff that, that, you know, the instruction stuff. I've run across a handful of instruction stuff over the years, uh, some of them are worth money, some of them aren't worth anything. It just depends on the year and what you got. Uh, but it's also one of those things, I always pick them up. 
because and I'll explain why in a few minutes about flea markets that I always grab them if I see them for a dollar or less because I know where I can move them. So I actually have a I have a a different book that's like illegal in England <laughs> uh, because it's uh, combat stuff. Uh, so anyway, sixty five for that F fifteen crew chief's handbook. That's a real good price, real good find. Uh, and this will I'm hoping I find I have a box for this. Because I'm gonna box this up. Uh, books over about 30, 30 bucks, give or take, depending on what it is, they go in a box. And I recommend anything that's has some value in it, don't just put it in a pad mailer or put it in the mail. Put put it in a pad mailer and put it in the box. So your buyer will appreciate it greatly. So all right. Uh couple of finds. And both of these were from the flea market. Well, I got a couple a couple other things too. Uh from the but best ones were from the flea market this weekend. Um, but I did hit Goodwill. Excuse me. Um, that's for the kids. A uh, couple of books. A uh, couple of American Girl books. I've got a lot up on eBay right now. I'm going to add these to it and bump it up by a couple bucks. Uh, so american girl books or some of those that work well as a lot just you know make sure you get them at the right price i pick these up 50 cents a piece the plan is to get about two bucks a book in a, in a big lot so we'll see how that goes finally and the other one i found at goodwill i survived um i'm on a tear right now of selling i survived books uh, i pick them at particularly local on facebook marketplace in certain niche either children's or homeschool groups uh, people love these things. So, uh, I survived books, 50 cents a piece or cheaper, snag them. And I, sometimes you can get even like a three dot three or $4 a piece for them. So, uh, worth grabbing and bundling. I'm a big bundler for some reason. Well, niche. Okay. Finally, uh, we're going to talk about flea market. First, what I found at the flea market. This is a box. This is an empty box. I got a, this actually, this control, a couple of these came in it. This one's missing some parts, but I got the other half of a uh, controller. Uh, and I got another attachment piece that came in it. The lady brought this out, uh, saying, saying something about, oh, she brought it out because she forgot it at home the last time she came out. Well, this box, it's got a little tear in it, but this is the box to the limited edition, special edition, uh, Animal Crossing Switch. And a box in really good, like perfect condition went for about 50 bucks for the box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this has a tear in it and there's another one up for like 25 bucks. Is I'm going to put this box up for $25. And see if I can't get it. It's an empty box, but uh, it is stuff like this. If you bought a Switch used, um, it's nice to have the box to it. Uh, it adds value. It is per made precisely for that item. So, um, and maybe even if somebody's giving one away this, this Christmas, getting the box for it would be nice so they could give it to their kid rather than just that. So, that is... The plan on that um, trick, and, and with, thankfully with ground advantage shipping, I don't have to ship this priority. Uh, I can say I'll, I'll be able to save some money. I may break it down and ship it flat, depending on what kind of what box I have to ship it in. Uh, I'm not bagging this, and I'm not just throwing a label on it. This is going to go in a box and get shipped out. That's what I'm going to do. So, uh, but I may break it down because it do, it doesn't it's not taped or glued. Uh, but it'll just depend on what, what I've got available. So, boxes to expensive to uh, game systems. Don't pass on them. Uh, if you see them by the side of the road, grab them. Uh, there are there is value in them. The shipping's the tricky thing because of the dimensions. So, uh, but the weight isn't. So there you go. So anyway, so we're thinking about. Finally, a model. This, oh, that's a beat up old model. Nope, it is unbuilt. Um, 
so it looks like it's got all the parts to it so a couple of things are off the trees so and it was a dollar so I will buy any unbuilt model for a dollar even with a beat up box and that sort of thing uh, I saw these going for about 30 35 like unopened fresh so I'm thinking 15 to 20 bucks I'll be able to get on this so again Ground advantage. Uh, I, this ships a lot cheaper than going priority. It's a, it's almost half. Something like this, shipping's about half, give or take, of what it used to cost to ship. Um, I'm not worried about shipping this to California anymore. Somebody in California buys it and, and make and not lose, making money. So anyway, uh, finally, one other find that came came in is this Dell laptop. Uh, I fished it out of a dumpster, and actually I fished three out of a dumpster. Uh, one had a bad hard drive. This one seems fine. What I did is I put plugged it in, reformatted it. Seems to crank along pretty good. Haven't had to use it for anything. I'm I don't know what I'm going to do with it quite yet, uh, because it doesn't have any like essential. Uh, it's not like it's uh, really useful for me right now. So I may flip it. I may hang on to it. All I did was I went and bought a power cord for it and reformatted it uh, because the guy was dumb enough to leave the hard drive in it, which you never should do uh, when you're at, when you're disposing of your computers. Pull the hard drives out, and if you don't know how, find someone who does. Anyway, no fussing about that. Flea market did fine. Made about. Let's see. We sold grossed. I grossed with fifty one seventy hundred seventy dollars, which is okay. I, I, I'd rather hit that two hundred dollar mark. Um, I think I when I, I have a previous video where I discussed trying something different where I work and setting up outside, and it didn't pan out because I only made sixty bucks, um, and twenty of that to the twenty of that to somebody helping me. So, uh, but if I had combined all that, okay, I, I kind of, kind of, I'm kind of throwing these two together. So that's over 200. So that's pretty good day, because uh, I know what I sold at that garage sale, and it would have sold at the flea market. I'm pretty convinced. So, uh, an, an okay day, particularly considering the difficulty we had setting up. I almost didn't get good tables. I like getting three tables together. I have an SUV, a small SUV, and I can fit three of their big concrete tables and I bring two small four-footers uh, to, the, to the flea market and set them up. I, ha I can fit just enough stuff in my CRV to fill that up. I don't have to worry about do I, am I bringing enough stuff or am I not bringing enough stuff? Because for whatever reason, the quantity of that fits the tables. So, uh, but I almost did. The flea market was so busy that the only reason I got these three tables together is because a dude had to leave. I may not have gotten a table, or I would have had. I would have been scrambling to find one, uh, one or two. But uh, I like getting three tables together, and was able to do that. So, uh, so we did that. Got a buddy of mine who actually had one of the tables. So I'm I'm sitting here with two and a couple on the side that are hard to get to. Uh, so me and my kid, we're out there selling. Uh, we, here's what we sold. I had a couple of Ford Model T tools. Sold ten dollars cash, which is about what I would have made net selling them on a platform like eBay. Uh, sold handful of other tools. Uh, not a a whole mess of a lot. Sold a ton of toys. Uh, sold a lot of a lot of uh, 124 size cars. That's the ones. Uh, see this. This is this is a, a little bit bigger than this. Um, sold a lot of 124 size cars. Sold a lot of the uh, monster tr the the Hot Wheels monster trucks. Sold a handful of those. All at like two dollars a piece. Sold a handful of one dollar cars. Um, a lot of the kids walking by, their their parents let. No, I put all my 
my bins of Hot Wheels on the ground, kids walking by, a lot of parents selling, you know, letting them buy two cars for a dollar. Uh, cause that's, that's what I let those go for. Um, sold a, hand, a good chunk of action figures, uh, a lot in it, more inexpensive action figures and stuff they, uh, out there. You know, I was selling, basically what I was telling guys is, you know, two figures here, $2 in this bin. Collectors don't flinch at that price. I was like selling $2 a piece and rounding down, you know, to the easiest denomination. So, uh, so, you know, selling eight figs for 15 bucks, something like that. And the guys weren't flinching at that price. Uh, and, and the guys knowing what they were getting were grabbing it. It wasn't, it wasn't a problem. It was great. So, uh, sold a couple of books. I brought a bunch of old books out there, but I actually was limited in space and didn't pull out the books I should have, which are my Civil War books. Uh, those, those wound up staying in the car and I messed that up because that was some sales I probably had, probably missed. So, but that was, that was another 10 bucks maybe at best. Uh, so, uh, the vintage books don't seem to go out there. So, uh, I am going to bring the vintage books up and put them for sale as decorative at like three bucks a piece in lots and see how that goes. Uh, so, but it was a good day, bought a few things. Uh, found some Lego sets for really inexpensive, uh, but that was that was kind of the uh, my my son who came with us. That was his payment. Was I bought I let him, uh, was I bought him the Lego sets. So uh, whenever I bring a kid out there, it's an automatic twenty bucks. When they get to be a teenager, it's twenty five percent, so that they know, so that they. It, on top of they have their own box in my garage is like this is the stuff I want to resell I want to sell I don't need any more I want to sell it and they get to keep all the money off their own stuff so uh, that's that uh, that's that story uh, I like doing flea market I'll probably do another one there's usually a weekend right before Christmas one of the two weekends before Christmas that for some reason is always a nice day and I bring stuff out there and it sells well. It, it's kind of uncanny, um, but I'm also going to have to be a lot more descript. I'm going to have to get out there a lot earlier because uh, I don't have an account set up. Um, now I probably should have, but I, might, I may have to do that next time uh, because I can't just call and do do a credit card over the phone anymore uh, to to get to reserve uh, to reserve a table. So uh, that is that. Uh, and y'all have a good Thanksgiving. I'm going to be off the air for about a week, give or take, because uh, I got stuff to do. And so do you. So you don't need to be sitting around listening, watching me on YouTube uh, ramble on about stuff. You need to be doing something for Thanksgiving. So uh, y'all go do that. Have a good day. Like, comment, subscribe. Watch more videos on the channel. Tell me what you think. Ask some questions. And we will go from there. Oh, one more sip of coffee.